Hey everybody, what's up? It's Jake. Uh, it's Tuesday. I had some free time here and I figured I would drop a video. It's been a while since I did one, so uh, hopefully somebody is uh, getting something out of them and enjoying them. Sorry it's been so long. Uh, I hope you enjoy the updates I've made. It's not much, but it's something. Um, so basically today I wanted to touch base and, uh, share a video about a guy everybody might know. Um, I know Mobvax, I don't remember how recently it was, but Mobvax actually posted the news clip of, uh, his death. So, uh, you know, that'd be pretty cool to check out afterwards of, you know, watching this, in my opinion. Uh, but basically, the guy I'm going to talk about today, without further ado, is Michael Zaffirano. Everybody called him Mickey Z. He was a cap regime in the Banano crime family. Uh, at one point, he was a driver for Joe Banano. I don't know, uh, Banano, sorry. I don't know why I said it that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Joe Banano fucked up. He fucked up. But before that, he was a big guy, so to be a driver for him, that, you know, obviously makes you a somebody. That's piqued my interest. Uh, but basically, he was into the adult entertainment industry, hardcore. Uh, he had a lot of peep shows, uh, porn studios, if you will, uh, topless bars, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, strip clubs, massage parlors were big. Um, he also did things like uh, check fraud. He got caught in California uh, transporting over state lines some checks or something like that and uh, got in trouble for that. So he's got some of that on there. He's got assault and robbery. So he's done his fair share of, uh, of trench work, if you will. <coughs> So, like I said, he owns strip clubs, peep shows, all that stuff. Uh, basically, some of his big money makers were uh, the Pussycat Theater. It was on, I got my notes here, uh, 210 West 49th Street. Uh, it was very profitable. Uh, that And he had four locations in the buildings of 1603 and through 1607 Broadway. Uh, he died on February 14th, 1980, during an FBI raid on his house. That is what I actually caught my interest about. I'm sorry, I, the other one was interesting, but I was like, holy shit. Um, I always wondered if somebody died that way, and lo and behold, I found him. Um, I mean, hey, he beat jail, I guess. I'm sure he served time for that. I think he did seven years or something like that, but, you know, he was getting indicted. I'm sure he beat it. Um... But really, something that I found really interesting, I looked up this place after he died. He left everything to his family. Um, I want to say he only had the one son, but I could be wrong. Uh, but he had a son named John Zaffirano. Uh, I don't think he was involved in the life, especially with the way, you know, with what I'm about to tell you. It just doesn't strike me like he is involved in the life. But basically, I'm sure he was around and stuff like that. <clears throat> But this is the stuff that I really found interesting, and I kind of paragraphed this, so I'm just kind of, kind of read it from my notes for you guys, um, just because, you know, it's a lot I want to cover, but I will uh, do that now. So like I said, he left everything to his family, and uh, in 1986, his son John sold the Pussycat Theater for $18 million in 1986. The thing was making well over a million dollars a week, obviously. It was just a fucking money machine. Um, during the trial of Vinny Asaro, I know a lot of people know who that is, uh, an alleged member of the crew that did the Latanza heist, John testified as saying Asaro shook him down for a debt his father supposedly had with him. Um, also... Maddie the Horse Ainello claimed to have uh, interest in the peep shows that were being ran in the buildings that he sold, and he wanted a million dollars because, you know, he sold the buildings. Uh, basically, Zaffirano had a sorrow intermediate the meetings between Ainello, Maddie the Horse, and uh, 
Asaro told him, you know, pay him first, because, you know, I think the quote was, you don't fuck with a guy like that. Um, so he paid, I think it was $750,000 to Maddie the Horse. Uh, then later on down the road, uh, Vinny Asaro, I believe, got like $300,000. So, uh, you know, that goes to show what happens when you're on the street and what happens when you're dead. They uh, definitely, I don't know, whatever happened, to will take care of your family, but that was definitely ho. I thought, you know, that was worth mentioning. Sorry for the swearing. I'm just trying to get more comfortable here. I'm trying to do things to make it easier for me to speak about this stuff because I really want people, you know, start talking with me about it and getting interactive with me because, you know, that's why I'm doing it. Um, so, yeah, if you have any comments or if you think I missed anything or messed anything up, let me know. Um, other than that, you have a good one.